The SR-47 sniper rifle slotted together effortlessly. Even after so many years of combat usage, the weapon was in pristine condition. In all the time Agent Harris had owned the gun, though, the thousands of times she'd fired it, not once had it jammed. And that was fortunate, because she had to move quickly. In a clearing about 300 meters in front of her were their targets. Capable of teleporting in a split second, she needed to be sure that her team would be able to finish the job quickly and efficiently. She looked through the scope slotted onto her rifle and kicked out the bipod, resting it on a tree stump. Now she just had to wait for the signal. She looked all around the marsh, trying her best to spot her fellow agents, but they were also well camouflaged. Even though she knew the exact spot where they would be, she couldn't see anyone. She'd always wanted to see the Himalayas. It had been on her bucket list to climb Mount Everest as a child, but the world had changed since then. Mount Everest was gone. In fact, the majority of Nepal had vanished, replaced by an enormous marsh full almost exclusively of pink ferns and droopy trees that seemed to sag to one side, unable to support their own weight. The most striking natural wonder on planet Earth had been replaced by a landscape that was flat, wet, and alien. Agent Harris curled her finger around the trigger and took aim through her sights. Two minutes passed, then the gentle whistle of a sparrow drifted over to her in the humid air. Except, of course, it couldn't be a sparrow. To the best of her knowledge, sparrows had gone extinct. With a snarl of anger, Agent Harris squeezed the trigger. She felt the silent sniper rifle kick her shoulder. If they wanted war, they sure as hell would get it. The destruction of the world began in 2078. Its designation was SCP Orange A. And as often happens with these kind of things, no one saw it coming. The SCP Foundation, having dedicated decades to researching potential world destroying events, was totally blindsided by what happened the day the weasels showed up. Weasels, you ask? That's right. But before we explain, a question for you. Is something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? Regardless if you have a clinical mental health issue like depression or anxiety, or if you're just a human who lives in this world who is going through a hard time, therapy can give you tools to approach your life in a very different way. And that's why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more affordable and more accessible, and this is an important mission because finding a therapist can be really hard, especially when you're limited to the options in your area. BetterHelp is a platform that makes finding a therapist easier because it's online, it's remote, and by filling out a few questions, BetterHelp can match you to a professional therapist in as little as a few days. It's easy to sign up and get matched with a therapist. There's a link in my description. It's betterhelp.com forward slash SCP explained. Clicking that link helps support this channel, but it also gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp, so you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. And because finding a therapist is a little like dating, if you don't really fit with that therapist, which is a common thing with therapy, you can easily switch to a new therapist at no additional cost without stressing about insurance, who's in your network, or anything like that. So if you're struggling, consider online therapy with BetterHelp. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com forward slash SCP explained. Thank Thank you again, BetterHelp, for supporting this channel. And now, as we were saying about the weasels. A man called Harlan Stump was the first human to make contact with the weasels. He was the groundskeeper at Site 59. Harlan was making his usual weekly trips around the perimeter of the courtyard on his ride-along lawnmower, watching baseball on his phone all the way when, out of nowhere, the aliens appeared. Just two meters in front of him, a squadron of 11 weasels materialized. The weasels, designated SCP Orange-B, stand at a minimum of 3 meters tall. With 16 legs and an exoskeleton carapace, they share a resemblance with terrestrial insects. Their bodies are segmented, composed of a head, primary thorax, secondary thorax, tertiary thoracic cloister, abdomen, and tail. With a hard segmented shell covering their backs and no apparent sensory organs, aside from a radula on their heads, they are an intimidating presence. Most striking about them, however, is the most delicate part of their appearance. On their backs, each weasel has an array of flora growing in a kind of garden. It appears that each weasel has a different array of flowers growing from their backs. Understanding the meaning of these gardens can be difficult, but it appears the more extravagant it is, the higher ranking the individual weasel is. The eleven weasels that appeared before Harlan Stump each had a very vibrant garden indeed. 
but no more so than the weasel held aloft in an ornate palaquin. Harlan Stump stopped mowing and stared at the aliens for approximately 13 seconds, at which point he let out a sigh, pressed play on his baseball game, and continued mowing the lawn. He spent too many years groundskeeping Site-59 to get spooked by anything as harmless as giant teleporting insects. Just three more weeks and he would be retired. Until then, he was avoiding nonsense like the plague. Except his phone had disappeared. Harlan stared down at the empty space, confusion knitting his eyebrows together, before looking up and seeing the handset in the hands of the alien sitting on its regal throne. The smartphone made a loud screeching noise and then all of a sudden began to flick between snippets of YouTube videos, each clip lasting just a couple of seconds. After a moment, Harlan realized that the alien was using the videos to speak to him. The words were being picked out from all these different videos to stitch together a sentence, barely. Hi dilly ho, neighborinos! This is Foundation. Reports indicate Foundation is, locally, the masters of the universe. Isn't that right, darling? Question mark. Keen to finish his mowing and avoid further nonsense, Harlan had to concede that he should probably talk to these aliens, if only to get his phone back. He told them he liked the gardens on their backs. Why, thank you! Gardening is kind of our thing. Well, quick question. Is your species capable of dying? Mm hmm? Harlan gulped. He'd been around long enough to see where this was going. The conversation was brief. Harlan kept glancing at his phone, desperately hoping that these aliens hadn't somehow broken it and that it hadn't lost his place in the match, until all of a sudden, Harlan's stump disappeared, as did his ride-on lawnmower, his smartphone, and a patch of lawn, replaced by a roughly 10-meter circle of Antarctic ice and snow. No one is certain yet how the weasels are able to do it. All that is known is that they can. The phenomenon came to be known as juxtaposing. Matter from one location could be instantaneously switched with matter from a different location. It is how the weasels first arrived on planet Earth, triggering the event of SCP-001 Orange-A. Orange-A lasted for just two hours, but it changed the course of humanity forever. On the 29th of April, 2078, 48.52% of the Earth's habitable surface area dematerialized and rematerialized half a kilometer above the South Pole. Cities and towns from all across planet Earth, one by one, disappeared and reappeared in the air above the South Pole, where they promptly fell 500 meters, causing back-to-back -back seismic events. Washington, D.C., Beijing, and London were targeted first, followed by Tokyo, Delhi, and then a number of capital cities from Europe. This two-hour window resulted in freak weather events as minus 50-degree pockets of air, kilometers across, replaced the disappearing cities. It is disputed as to who will launch the first nuclear warhead, whether it was done by accident, out of fear, or as a strategic attack against a group of weasels. Orange Dache was simply too chaotic and destructive for humanity ever to be able to know what happened in that short period of time. The result, however, was a number of nuclear explosions raging across the planet before the cities in charge of launching them were also transported to the South Pole. While the weasels were capable of experiencing juxtaposition without any apparent physical harm, terrestrial life forms were less fortunate. During the process of juxtaposition, the bonds between each and every cell are broken. While organic life does get transported to the new location, it undergoes immediate liquefaction. Not a single Earth-born life form has been observed surviving a juxtaposition event. In that two-hour window, 6.9 billion people were killed. Humanity had lost. This event triggered the use of Project Yellow, an emergency evacuation protocol that occurs at the point where the survival of the human race seems to be virtually zero. A small band of specially chosen individuals were evacuated to a pocket dimension, where they were put into cryosleep to wait until the Earth was habitable once again. In the days following the events of Orange Dache, the true invasion began. Choosing the Sahara Desert as their arrival point, the weasels started to appear in legions. Millions and millions of them filled the desert sands and went about populating their new planet. But what was their purpose? Well, fortunately, we have been able to salvage a modest amount of data that can inform us of why they're here and what their plans are. The weasel that first appeared to Harlan's stump, just outside Site-59, has been designated SCP Orange Prime. It is believed that this weasel, in particular, is their leader. Whether Prime is simply the leader of this colony or the wider species is yet to be confirmed. Security cameras were able to capture the interaction as it took place within Site-59's grounds. 
In their conversation, Orange Prime explains their purpose to Harlan through YouTube clips on his phone. Long story short, weasels have come from homeworld dimension for fulfill a long-standing mutual agreement with Cranma. This is one of many new homes. This is a pretty nice place for weasels. This land is my land from California to the New York Islands. From the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters, this land was made for weasels to garden, to farm, to create beauty, to spread good vibes, to cultivate, to remake, to terraform, etc., etc. Since this encounter, no human has been able to get close enough to Orange Prime to engage the weasel in further conversation. This snippet of footage is all that humanity has to understand why this alien species has slaughtered billions of us. Four months later, Agent Harris lay flat in the marshlands, firing her sniper rifle at the weasels gathering in a clearing ahead of them. Their operation looked like overkill. It always did. It was of utmost importance that they strike quickly and without mercy. Sustained heavy gunfire from all sides, combined with RPG fire and the use of incendiary weapons, made short work of the weasels. All of these weapons were necessary to pierce the heavy armor that covered their backs. But that was the reason it felt like overkill. It felt that way because the weasels never fought back. They would not attack, defend themselves, help their fallen allies, or even beg for their lives. They would simply stand idly by as they were gunned down. That is, until the incendiary grenades arrived. The pink ferns filling the marshlands caught fire and began to curl and smoke heavily. As soon as that happened, the weasels sprung into action, quickly splashing water onto the leaves, trying their best to save the plants. The incendiary grenades were not necessary. They did very little damage to the weasels themselves. The reason the platoons used the grenades was that it was one way they had found to distress their alien invaders in any way. It was a small revenge they could take for the billions of people who had lost their lives over the prior few months. Agent Harris pumped five extra shots into the corpse of a weasel before standing down and going to examine her handiwork. They had been hunting Orange Prime. Rumors had suggested that their primary target had been lurking in the Himalayan region, but that had obviously proven to be false. Among all the bodies on the ground, there was no sign of the fearless leader. Frustration boiled in Harris as she kicked a corpse. The thick shell hurt her foot. She must have broken her toe. At that moment, a rustling noise came from the other side of the trees. Soon, dozens more, hundreds more weasels were walking through the marsh. In a split second, her platoon opened fire. Tracer rounds lashed through the trees, and the orange glow of fire danced in every direction. But there were more weasels, many more of them. Agent Harris felt her stomach knot as she fired her rifle into the crowd. There were too many, simply too many. They were going to run out of ammo before they had a chance to shoot down each and every one of them. And she was right. The firefight lasted for 30 minutes before the remaining soldier ran out of ammunition. Dozens of weasel bodies littered the marsh, floating in the water. Dozens more weasels stood encircling the group. That's when the humming started. Whenever a juxtaposition event occurs, it is always accompanied by the weasels humming to themselves. It is unclear whether this is the cause of the juxtaposition or simply a ritual that they perform. But every soldier has come to know that sound, and each one of them fears it in the pit of their stomach. So they started to disappear all around her one by one, replaced by puffs of cold air with snowflakes still gently hanging in the breeze. The human population of planet Earth dwindled as the weasel population bloomed. Large swaths of the planet were terraformed one by one to make room for alien flora. The South Pole became a larger and larger dumping ground for all the detrius that had once been the most celebrated works of the human race. The Mona Lisa was torn and forgotten, buried under many kilometers of concrete, exposed sewage works, and apartment complexes. And the situation only got worse in October. Acting against prior instructions from the Foundation, the Global Occult Coalition launched Project Popco, a 200 megaton nuclear warhead directly at a large weasel population center. As the warhead began its descent, the entire sky turned a solid dark blue. Project Popco immediately fell out of contact, as did all satellites that had been orbiting the planet. The sun, moon, and stars could not be seen. The entire sky was just a uniform dark blue. In a desperate attempt to find out what was going on, the Foundation launched a manned rocket in the direction of Popco's most recent coordinates. 
Contact with the rocket was lost after just nine minutes. This is the most recent known account of events from inside that rocket. All of a sudden, just a few minutes into the flight, warning alarms started going off all over the cockpit. The radar was picking up a solid object blocking their path. Gathering around the readouts, the crew came to a very quick conclusion that the dark blue that had been filling the sky was actually a solid object that was encasing the Earth. But rather than abort the mission, the crew decided to persevere. Having witnessed so much death and destruction over the previous year, they knew they would much rather go out and crashing a rocket into a blue wall than join the billions of humans liquefied in a pile in Antarctica. Closing their eyes, bracing for impact, the crew readied themselves for their now inevitable deaths, but it didn't come. Instead, the rocket was able to force its way through the dense blue object, falling apart as it went. Ground control lost contact with the ship, nothing. And then a few seconds of audio, the crew had made it. They had somehow managed to pierce their way through the blue shell that was surrounding their planet and were out into, not space. The Earth, the entire planet, had been juxtaposed. Willkommen! Bienvenue! Welcome to an exclusive behind-the-scenes look at heaven. Now go check out SCP-001-15 Files Protected by Mimetic Kill Agent and SCP-001-U are the anomaly.